Thanks very much, uh, Kerlock. And uh, I don't usually do this, but I, I just have to respond to a few points from the previous speaker. Uh, and I have the ultimate respect for Sen Senator Keoghan uh, and a lot of the uh, viewpoints that she brings to this chamber. So I don't mean this in a, in a negative way or anything like that, but I feel it's my duty to respond to that from a Fine Gael perspective. Um, the, We've been here two years through the chair, Senator Keoghan, and if you look at the list of speakers who are down for this debate, the majority of those list of speakers are government speakers. At no stage over these last two and a half years have we all been in the chamber at the same time because of COVID. We've all been moving in out of it. I've been in this house for eight years. You, Minister, have been here a lot longer than me as well since 1997. And you and anyone else can attest to it that members come into the chamber, they make a speech, they then are back in their offices. A lot of the time we have the TVs on and we're listening to the contributions there at the same time. There's been plenty of times I haven't decided to be in a debate and I come down in the middle of the contribution having listened to something on it. So I just feel it's disingenuous, with all due respect, Senator, to say that there aren't senators in the chamber. It would be ridiculous of our time to sit through a two or three hour debate listening to every single contribution after we've made our own speech. I know I'm going off on the tangent and I'd like to I know, no, thank you for your it's, indulgence. It's, it's um, a fair point, but there is a practice uh, and in the House that you don't refer to members who are not in the House. So I just want to make that point as well. So. Yeah, and, th and thank you, Kerlock, for, for your indulgence in allowing me just to make those few points before I go on to passports. The final thing about it is, fr from a perspective, this, th what we're talking about tonight, passports, it is a very important issue, as are the other issues that Senator Keoghan raised. And at every stage, there's been important issues been discussed at. And I, and I would never consider saying to a Sinn Féin senator, an independent senator, or another senator that the issue that they wish to bring up in this House isn't valid or isn't of importance compared to other issues. Because every other issue that each senator raised, they have the right to raise it, and it's of equal importance. And every issue that is brought in this House, regardless of who says it or regardless of who brings it up, has the same level of equity in my views. And to turn around and say that one issue isn't important based on your own personal view, uh, I think is deeply unfair, and I think goes against the spirit uh, of this House. Uh, and I, I thank you for your, your uh, indulgence and let me go off on that, Kay Herlock. Uh, very briefly, uh, Minister, in, in relation to this, it, it's very difficult to come into this debate after you've had such a comprehensive reply of 15 minutes, and I really appreciate it. Uh, also, when a couple of the same points have been made, so I'll just very briefly try and reiterate them and to thank you for the engagement that you've had with ourselves over the last couple of weeks which outlining some of the queries to it. One of them was about the 40 days. I, I really uh, appreciate the fact that you are putting a lot of investment into the passport service to try and reduce those 40 days for first-time ap applications. Uh, one of the things that I've spoken to you about, which I do believe it, that is inherently unfair, is that if you make a mistake on the application that it goes back to the very start of the clock for the 40 days. But I do acknowledge that you've said you're looking to try and rectify that uh, and to try and change that. And I think that is a really positive step. Um, one other thing that I would say in relation to first-time passports is that um, where the passport is coming back to the child, the parents' passports tend to follow a couple of days later or a week after. I just think it would make absolute sense that all of those passports come back at the same time because generally what I've experienced in my office is the passport comes back in time for the date of travel, but the parents' passport hasn't come back. And then we're trying to struggle to get the parents' passport out as well. So the point is the, the documentation comes back a few days after the passport comes along. So it's about to try and, and get it back at the same time, I think would be useful. In terms of the Oireachtas line, Minister, that you set up a number of months ago, I find that extremely useful. And I would really like to try and see that continue in some sort of a guise for the next couple of months until we get the passport service uh, up to the standard that you like in terms of the level of retraining and everything else that we want to do to make it a more efficient uh, and smoother service. Uh, and finally, like in my, in my couple of years when I worked in this house, I worked for Senator Paul Coughlin, and I had the pleasure of sharing an office with uh, Karen Warren, who works for Paddy Burke. Uh, and Karen was the absolute passport expert. I learned more about passports through Karen Warren in those three years in that office. And perhaps that's a testament to why Paddy Burke hasn't lost an election in 30 years. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, but uh, Karen, is, uh, Karen has been uh, a super uh, round of advice for all of us in this house who aren't necessarily uh, in political parties or in Fine Gael or that. Um, and I really learned so much from her. But the point is, Karen, for example, and people in this house know the passport system inside out. Uh, the general public don't know the passport system inside out. And it can be very daunting when they're trying to put an application in or that they make a mistake and then they're try then trying to find out from the passport office what the problem is. Uh, and I think that is why it is so important for those lines of communications from the passport office to be open, um, to be open to the public. Um, and finally, when you mentioned about how many applications were in in 2019, I really do feel for the passport uh, office staff. I think they've been under immense pressure over the last 18 months. It must have felt like 
uh, while having to deal with COVID at the same time, a tsunami of applications uh, coming at them. I know our office felt like um, you know every day we were dealing with it. So I really want to pay tribute to the Passport Office staff for dealing with such uh, an exceptional and uh, totally out of the norm level of passport applications that they've had to deal with. And I'm really pleased to put that on the record. So look, Minister, we've provided a lot of anecdotal evidence tonight. We have provided uh, some views about how we can make it more efficient, but I am very, very confident in your remit that you want to make it more efficient than it is already. You want to try and streamline it a bit more. Um, and hopefully when that does happen, we won't be annoying your good office or the offices of anyone else uh, as much as we do at this point in time. So thank you, Minister, for coming to this house and providing a very robust outline on this whole issue.